from the city of brotherly love. This is Shark Bite Biz with David Strausser. You just arrived to the newest episode of Shark Bite Biz. I'm your rock star wannabe host, David Strausser, and this is your place to learn how to grow a business during complete global chaos. As always, this episode is brought to you by our amazing sponsor and SAP Global Platinum Partner, Sador. That's S-E-I-D-O-R. If your business is ready to move off QuickBooks, ready to take that next step, give us a ring to help you automate your business processes. Again, that's Sador, S-E-I-D-O-R.com. Now, let's get back to today's episode. It is Super Bowl Monday. And, well, as you can see, I got my Jalen Hurts Philadelphia Eagles jersey on. Hopefully, I'm not jinxing us, but I'm recording this before the Super Bowl. So, hopefully, by the time this airs, we will be Super Bowl champions. At least, that's my hope. So, with, you know, the fun of it being Super Bowl Monday, I thought, Today, why not just have a light, easier, fun conversation that's about pursuing your passions? And we're going to have a rock star director that actually has a film out in theaters right now on the show today. So who do we have today? None other than director, writer, and producer, James Cullen Bressack. James Cullen Bressack is an American producer, director, and screenwriter, as well as the son of three-time Emmy Award-winning writer Gordon Bressack and voice actress Ellen Gerstow. At the age of 18, he received critical attention from audiences and critics alike when he made his debut feature, My Pure Joy. And if you watched the interview, interesting comments about what he says about this movie. One to push boundaries, James followed up with the bold and unapologetic hate crime, which forced audiences along for a brutal home invasion. The first found footage feature ever to be made in this style of having no cuts whatsoever. The entire film plays out painfully in real time it was promptly banned in the uk for its fearless storytelling one of only three films to be banned in the last 25 years and remain so to this day ahead of his time he then started the two jennifer series the first feature film to be shot entirely on the iphone 5 he produced the next three installments. The prolific filmmaker refused to slow down, completing seven more feature films, including Pernicious, 13, 13, 13, and Blood Lake, starring Shannon Doherty and Christopher Lloyd, which made James the youngest director to ever direct for television. His films have starred Mel Gibson, Bruce Willis, DMX, Steven Seagal, and many, many more. You could see his newest movie, Murder Anyone, right now across the country, streaming, and I believe in theaters. So, hey, let's get done with this bio and let's get this all-star director right on in here right now. Creative and innovation tips. James, welcome to Shark Bite Biz. You, my friend. Just became shark bait. Hey, how are you? Good, good. You were so impressed by my tagline. I could tell. Reminds me of like a Finding Nemo when they're like shark bait, boo ha ha. <laughs> yeah, there you. That's what I should start doing, right? But anyways, for people that do not know who James Cullen Brissick is, okay, give us a high level overview. What do you do? How do you get there? Tell us in your humble opinion, what do you think of yourself? Who? How do you explain yourself to others? I'm a filmmaker. Uh, I've made a. Quite a bit of movies, some of them bad, some of them mildly entertaining, some of them good. Um, but I've always tried my best. <laughs> and uh, and then hopefully people enjoy them. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, that's an important topic right there. You know, always trying your best, you know, like always do your best. Because how many movies do you think that you've produced where you may have done it, you know, quote unquote, half ass? Like I could have did that better and got a better result. Were there any? I mean, you know, every single time I make a movie, I feel like I learn and grow. So like, you know, hindsight, like I'll always look back and be like, ah, I could have done this and could have done that. But, you know, I mean, <clears throat> during that point of my life, I always feel like I did the best of the knowledge that I had at that time. Right, right. That That's good. That's important. The hindsight part 
is probably what's most important, you know, being able to learn from hindsight because you don't always realize it in the moment. But when you go back and review, that allows you to grow. So not the name drop. I mean, you have an impressive list of actors that uh, you've had in your film. I mean, it's not like you're just some nobody, new producer, director, you know, filmmaker. Uh, you've had some impressive cast. Do you want to name drop some people that's been on your movies? You know, I've just really lucked out that I've been able to work with so many people that uh, I grew up watching, you know? So, like, these are the people that, like, inspired me to want to make movies. I mean, like, you know, I'm young. I'm 30 years old. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm... I'm you know, so these are a lot of people I grew up with. Like, you know, I was a '90s baby, so you know, I'm, I'm I have a lot of love for the 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 '90s, and and uh, and you know, I, I definitely love the 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 cast that I've been able to work with. It's it's a surreal experience to you know watch on camera, uh, you know, the people that I grew up watching, you know, and I'm like, wow, like I'm I'm watching something that like little kid me would have watch and giving myself a high five over, you know? Yeah, no, that, that is totally, totally awesome. Uh, but since you won't name drop, I will. I mean, it looks like if Steven Seagal, I've seen uh, DMX, Bruce Willis, people like that. I mean, you, you have people, I mean, just to uh, meet those people to me would be mind blown, but you're making films with some of the most creative minds out there. I mean, best, some of the best actors that have ever been around. I mean, being that you're young, okay, when I, some people may say 30s old, I know my kids do, but you know, you're young in your career yet and you still got, you know, maybe 30, 40, 50 more years of filmmaking left, okay? Yeah, hopefully, right? Right. That's what we all hope for. Um, wh- I mean, how does that feel when you're working with some of these legendary actors like, you know, a Steven Seagal or somebody like that? Because you know what he's done in his past. You know who he is. And like you said, you know, you you idolize these types of stars in the 90s. Does that affect the way that your creative mojo goes during filmmaking it's uh it, it makes me excited to work with them but like you know <laughs> at the end of the day you know when i worked with him or like when i worked with mel gibson or or even um you know i did a movie uh just recently with john claude van damme you know it's it's these are the people that like i grew up watching but at the same time like when i'm working with them like you know i i, I step outside of myself and i focus on like i wait to fanboy when i'm like staring at the monitor and I'm like, oh, crap. It's like I'm watching a movie. Like I'm watching the behind the scenes of a movie I would like to watch. Is that when you know that it's good? Sorry to interrupt. But if you're filming a movie, you're making a movie, OK? And like you have like the fanboy moment where it's like, wow, this would have been a movie I would have loved to watch when I was a kid. Is that clicking in your head? Like, OK, if that's how I feel, then that means it's right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, you know. It's, I mean, like I didn't go to film school. I grew up watching movies and I learned from making movies. So, you know, like I I learned from trial and errors. That's why, you know, when you were like, you know, hindsight, like that's how I learned. I I made mistakes. I did the best I could at that time, but I've made the mistakes and learned from them. Uh, It's why I've made so many movies. I've made like 22 movies because I kept trying to do better than the last one. And so it's like, you know, uh, each time I did it, I'd, I'd learn a little and evolve as a filmmaker. So like, you know, it's uh, I learned from just watching movies and, and the mistakes I've made on my previous movies. So <clears throat> I definitely look at stuff. Not to put you in the spot, but you said that you learned from mistakes that you've learned in hindsight. What was maybe one of the number one, number two things that you learned in hindsight? My first movie was two and a half hours long. So that was a huge mistake. I like longer movies, man. Yeah, but it's a movie that should have been 90 minutes, maybe 85 minutes, and it was two and a half hours. Too much filler material, would you say? I I, I think that movie is about like 75% filler. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, that, that That's tough. Now, what about working with, stars again with some of these like you just said john uh john claude van damme you said uh mel gibson what about working with them and their egos are they typically humble or are they like hey you know i'm the rock star here you know this is how i've got to work i've been very fortunate that everybody i've worked with has been very uh gracious and collaborative and uh, and and kind so you know i uh I've not dealt with uh, any ego problems from from any of these guys. And I think, you know, 
approaching them as like, you know. And that's amazing because they're big names again, too. People that you would think that would have major ego. So that, that you've been really lucky. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I sat down for dinner with Mel, when I first met him and we sat down and we just sat there talking about like Apocalypto and we talked about like, you know, I talked about like his whole I, I talked about his whole career and, and, you know, the thing about Mel is like, he's not only a, a fantastic actor, but he's also like one of the greatest living directors, you know, like he's made some insanely amazing movies. Apocalypto is one of the best movies ever. Oh, it's, it's insanely good. And, and, uh, and like, you know, just diving into like conversation with him and talking just about like, you know, you know, UFC and like just like buddying up and, and having conversations it, it was a really just an amazing experience like you know at the end of the day like you know they're, you, they're just people that are creative and and if you if you show that you have a passion and a drive and a plan of what you want to do uh they in my experience they've all been on board now do they when you say that they're on board do they ever give you feedback like hey you know you have this uh scene like this i i really think we should do this angle or we should change the script a little bit i had a really great experience when i was collaborating with mel because like you know mel was talking with me and you know he felt uh, on hot seat the the movie we did together he felt his character should be a little funnier and so him and i sat through and actually punched up the dialogue and like kind of worked that together because i was like that's a good idea and uh and then you know uh for instance, when I was, you know, I, I was shooting the action scene with uh, Van Damme on this last movie and, and JC was like, hey, you should, it's going to look really good for this, like, you know, this hit I'm about to do if, if you throw the camera over here. And I was like, sure, let's do it. Like, you know, it's a collaboration. Film is a living, breathing thing. These guys have a lot of experience and it's not about ego. It's, uh, you know, in film, it's about the best idea winning. Right. So with the best idea winning, uh I mean, that's just, you know, I, I'm trying to absorb everything you just told me. I mean, first you're hanging out with Mel Gibson. I think I would enjoy that pretty much. But let, let's talk about the nature of the film industry right now. Okay. COVID hit. Everything pretty much went streaming. It was already going there, but it, COVID kind of pushed it off the cliff. And then it seems like there's a lot of movies that are coming out that are maybe subpar or, or, you know, they're, they're not the greatest. Like they're just creating content right now with some of these publishers. What's your take on the current film industry? Where do you think it could be better if you were in control of everything? I'd actually kind of go a different way and say I've, I've been really impressed with how well horror has been doing in theaters. You know, that's been really impressive and interesting to see. I'm a huge horror fan. I'm a huge horror fan. I mean, look, I got a, I got a Hellraiser tattoo on my arm and like I got, a, I got red rum on my wrist. You know, I'm, I'm a huge horror fan. So it's, it's, you know, but it's, it's really interesting to see how like, because I think horror movies were like the thing that was still being made during the pandemic. So people that weren't fans of horror have now become fans of horror because it was the only new content coming out for a little while. And I think that's like just made people into it. You know, and, and it's uh, it's really cool to uh, to see, you know, these these smaller horror movies doing gangbusters at the box office. I mean, you know, the interesting thing is these lower budget horror movies, you'd hear maybe one every five years that would like break out at the box office. We've had like we've had like like 10 this year and it's only February. Wow. I mean, you're talking like the first one that comes to mind for me, which was pure marketing uh, was Blair Witch, obviously. For sure. But yeah, I mean, look at like Barbarian breaking out at the box office. Look at like, you know, this movie Skinnamarink that just did like, that was like a $5,000 movie that just made $2 million at the, at the box office or maybe it was 15,000. Sorry. And then you got like, you know, stuff like, uh, you know, uh, this Winnie the Pooh blood and honey that that's now like, it's like a low budget horror movie. That's uh that's doing, you know, gangbusters and it's about to open up in the U S but it did well in, in Mexico. And then you have, uh, you know, terrifier two, which did amazing at the box office. I mean, it's just, and then smile doing really well at the box office. Oh, smiles. I've watched that movie. That was, that was pretty, that was a pretty darn good movie. The ending was like, Oh damn. You know, I love that movie. It was probably one of the, the best horror movies I think I've seen in the last couple, couple of months. Um, so 
it's interesting because where I was kind of look, if you look at mainstream media, stuff like that, and you see how they're talking about the industry and like, oh, these types of movies wouldn't be made today. It's like you're actually seeing the opposite end of it. And it seems like you're more optimistic, more positive, And it seems like it's pushed uh, filmmakers to be more efficient with their budgets, you know, to be lower cost and to really crank out good films. Is that accurate? Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, I'm excited about what I see, you know, it's, uh, it's because I think um, audiences have become more accepting of indie film, you know, because and that's, and then I think that's an interesting thing because, you know, it's, uh, it's, it seems like original ideas are what it's starting to win. And, and that's, what's exciting. So just a few quick follow-up questions. I know you're extremely, extremely busy. I'm also just recovering. I can't, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I'm recovering from like a, a cold. So I, I, I barely have like a voice at the moment too. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. I'll try to make this as easy as possible for you. So let's get If you don't mind, let's do some fandom questions for you real quick. Cause I'm sure some people are wondering, you know, you said you have what, 22 movies, was it? Or 21? Yeah. Yeah. 21 or 22, something like that. What your favorite movie that you produced yourself? And what's the worst movie you feel that you produce? My first movie is the one that I feel like is the worst. Uh, I think I made comments on that. And then uh, my best that's out is uh, is Murder Anyone, which came out uh, this Tuesday, so two days ago. Uh, and it's uh, it was based on my late father's uh, um, play that he wrote, and uh, and I, I used my own money to turn it into a movie. And it's a it's a really unique uh, film. It's like a horror comedy about two writers writing a a. A script that and while they're writing it what they're writing starts coming to life that reminds me of um oh what was it was it it was the one with the two brothers i forget the name of the show it's streaming right now and i binge watched like all 15 seasons of them where they they're they're hunters they're monster hunters the two brothers uh and basically they run into this guy and it's like this book series where everything that they uh, did in their life. Intimate details are all part of the book series, but the book series sucked and really nobody bought it. Uh, but it was actually God who was actually taping the story out. So it was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those, uh, you know, one of the mainstream channels, I think CW or something like that had it. But it was, uh, it, it was some pretty crazy twists and turns in that and, you know, what, what's your opinion? Because this is one, again, one of those controversial topics in the moment, you know, especially, uh, what is it, James uh, Cameron with uh, Avatar 2 was talking about in theater versus streaming. What's your take on that? I mean, I'll tell you right now, like, I'm a firm believer the place to see any movie is in theaters. I mean, it's great to be able to take them at home and see them at home and stuff, but nothing in the world beats the experience of seeing a movie in a packed theater for the first time. Because, you know, I, I enjoy a movie most times more when I see it in theaters than when I would at home. There's no distractions in a theater. There's distractions at home. And, uh, and I think, you know, being, a, being in a packed house that's, you know, in a comedy and everybody's laughing and you're laughing along with everybody being in a, a packed theater where everybody jumps because they're scared and you're all jumping at the same time, you know, being in awe of some huge special effect that everybody is going oh, at the same time to, or, you know, being in a sad moment where you're in a, the energy of the room, everybody cries, you know, it's the same thing of asking, you know, are you a sports fan? Where would you rather watch the Super Bowl at home or at the Super Bowl? You want the energy of the crowd. That's an extremely valid point. If you had the option, you'd go to the Super Bowl, and not watch it at home. So the, the, it's a crowd experience. And that's why I think it's important. And I, I hope to God that theaters never go away because it is where we should watch all our. You know, you, you brought up some amazing points right there that I've never personally even thought about with the group moment. There. And I think that is so, so, so valid because, you know, the energy feeds off the energy and you watch the movie at home. Home, you're distracted and you get a phone call you'll probably answer the call whereas if you're in the theater you're not picking up that call and you're going to put a hundred percent all your focus into that movie and i i think that makes a makes a huge impact on what you think of a movie if you're watching it in theater the way that it was meant to be versus watching it on your iPad at home on couch with your kids screaming behind you a hundred percent i mean and and it doesn't make you less of a film fan to watch movies at home, don't get me wrong, 
we watch, you know, we watch our favorite s- sports game. We can't go to every, you know, every, you know, Laker game in person. You can't go to every Dodger game or, or Yankee game in person. You know what I mean? But like, you know, that doesn't make you less of a fan that you watch it at home, but every chance you get to go see it live, you know, you want to go see it live. Oh yeah. And the bummer is you're talking about the Super Bowl. Everybody on my show knows that I'm a huge, huge, huge uh, Philadelphia Eagle head. Hey, there you go. Go Eagles, go birds. Are you going for the birds? Uh, yeah. I don't want to see chiefs win. Fly Eagles fly. Let's go. There you go. There you go. This episode will actually air the day after the Super Bowl airs. So uh, such a, a bummer because, uh, I, you know, still got a couple more days until this uh, comes up. But uh, I guess one last question, and then I'll let you put all your contact in, like your Twitter account, uh, you know, your promote your film, stuff like that, is tell me a funny or a good story that you're able to share publicly that you probably haven't told many people. I always like hearing some juicy gossip. Give me, Give me something. Without embarrassing somebody. I'll embarrass myself. I accidentally broke my nose one time because, you know, those pull-up bars at home? I I, uh, I tried to do a pull-up on it, and it was not hooked onto the door, and I pulled it and hit myself in the face with it. Um, <laughs> lo and behold, I do not have a pull-up bar anymore, but if that was not the silliest way to break my nose, I don't know what is. Uh, uh, that's great. That's great. So you said that you had a movie that just came out um, the past week. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a future movie coming out uh, sometime soon, too. Tell us about your movies what's the movies about where can we see them and then get your contact info there check out murder anyone which is available right now uh just came out two days ago uh but by this time it'll be out a week i guess um and uh you can check it out on vod platforms everywhere so like you know amazon itunes you know voodoo any of that type of stuff and then uh you know uh darkness of man which is my john claude van damme movie that'll be out later this year um and then also you know, follow me on Instagram or, and Twitter at James Cullen B. And we will have those links down below in the description. Hey, James, it's been an honor to have you on here, man. I mean, I'm telling you what, you have a resume, a portfolio. Wow. It blew my mind when I actually saw it. I'm like, this guy wants to be in my show, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> I'm honored to so have much, you on man. here, man. Thank you so much. And sorry that I kind of, I've been coughing. I've been getting over a cold, so I kind of don't have a voice right now. But thank you so much for taking the time to chat with hey, me. Hey, hey, I know, I know you're sick, man, and that's why I was like, okay, we'll just do a short interview, make it easy for you. So thank you, and uh, best of luck with your films, and we'll be promoting them on the show as well, too. All right, thank you so much. Yep, thanks. Wow, that was an incredible quick chat with James Cullen Bresak, right? Hey, got to keep it quick. He was sick. You know, it's coming out Super Bowl Monday. You, you guys got more. So you're probably dealing with hangovers, but this was still an incredible interview. First, you all know the routine. If you found this interview helpful, if it sparked those warm and fuzzies, do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button. But if you really want to help us out, because you know Shark Bite Biz is the greatest kept secret in the world of small business, please share it out to your friends, your families, your colleagues, anywhere that you dwell on the internet webs whether facebook twitter linkedin minds rumble just help get it out let's spread the word about james cullen Bressack's movie uh murder anybody and really help everybody grow i mean this is just an incredible growth moment now let's get back to the real rock star of the show okay even though this wasn't strictly a business related interview on this podcast there are some very critical solid business points that were made throughout the the conversation hindsight for one okay do a post-mortem yeah he's a super successful director and, and he realizes that afterwards he may have been able to do things in a better way or a better angle or a better light okay as steven tyler says in the super hit dream on you got to lose to learn how to win and that is a great story about 
failure or not doing your best work and using that as motivation to be able to improve going forward because now you're aware. Don't be afraid of criticism. Embrace the criticism and use that criticism to help jump to the next level of success. It's, you know, another thing I wanted to talk about was collaboration. You heard the the stars that he's working with, that A-list of actors that he has produced films with. He's never had a problem with anybody's ego. So if you have problems with your team, your egos, your sales reps' egos, whatever it is, if it's making it difficult to find a way to progress your business, okay, I mean, if James Colin Bressack can deal with Mel Gibson or Steven Seagal or uh, Bruce Willis, why can't you deal with your sales reps ego, okay? Work as a team in order to deliver the best final product you can. And in James's case, it's going to be a movie, you know, more than likely, or a TV show or a series or whatever it is, okay? But in your case, it's probably a sale or a, you know, a product or, or some kind of project for a customer. Collaborate. You know, there's a chance. Maybe you're the problem. Maybe you're the one that's not listening and it's not the ego of the other person. Maybe it's your ego, you know, look at it from a different angle. But try to have that collaborative mentality and that will really help you move things forward. Awesome stuff. Please, please check out James Colin Bressack's newest movie, Murder Anyone, in theaters now and look for his new movie with John claude Van Damme coming out. Later this year, question of the day. What is your favorite James Cullen Bressack movie? I'd love to see your comments down below, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're watching this at. Remember, if you want to be on the show, interviews at Shark Bite Biz. If you're watching on YouTube, join the channel. $3 a month, you can become a baby shark and support the channel. Or give us a super thanks. You know, it's the heart with the dollar sign button. $5, $20, whatever you can, every dollar helps us get the message, you know, the important message that we have in each one of these interviews out to more, more viewers. I don't do this to make money. I, any money we get, I put back out in better equipment, better production, more advertisements to get the word out further. And we are growing as fast as we can. Lastly, remember, shout out our sponsor, SAP Platinum Partner, Sador. Again, that's S E I D O R. Get off QuickBooks, next level up your business, automate your business processes. Go to Sador.com. You all know this by now, but I'll say it once again. First, fly Eagles fly. Hopefully, Super Bowl champions by the time you watch this. I'm David Strasser. This is Shark Bite Biz. We'll see you all next episode. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Shark Bite Biz. We hope you got some insightful info from this podcast. Be sure to subscribe to us through your favorite podcast app and visit us on the web at www.sharkbitebiz.com. How has business changed for you in the 20s? Email us at podcast at sharkbitebiz.com so you can join us and share your story.